Many thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. So I have spoken quite a bit recently, I guess over the last year or so, in regards to constantly kind of expanding your, your uh, I guess, photographic know-how, if you will, or just kind of getting outside of your comfort zone, trying new things out. Uh, I know I've mentioned this many times, I spent uh, the majority of my uh, start of my photographic journey doing the, the same thing over and over again. And it wasn't until I started to kind of venture outside of my, my comfort zone or my proverbial box, if you will, that I felt that I really started to expand my own creativity and kind of expand my, my own photographic skill set. So today is something that uh, I'm really, really excited about because I'm trying uh, two things out that I've never tried before. I think this, uh, this area here will do. I was, uh, I was hoping for a little bit of a frozen frozen dew or a little bit of patches of frost along the uh, this nice canopy of uh, fallen uh, autumn leaves, but that is not the case this morning. Everything is a, a little bit damp, which makes those colors kind of pop out a little bit more. So that is, uh, that's not too bad at all. I'm gonna try and find uh, something that I think will, will complement this technique that I'm going to, uh, to test out today. I'm not 100% certain as to what I'm doing, but uh, I figured the best way to do it is just to, to jump in and, and try and figure it all out. So I'm pretty certain most people are familiar with the, or know about the new Fuji X-T5 that was Hopefully you can see that that was just released. And uh, it's something that uh, I'm pretty excited about. Uh, for those that aren't aware, I've been using the, the X-T series to film all the, the video content for this channel now for, for I don't know, maybe four years now. It started with the, the Fuji X-T3 and then the X-T4 that I'm filming on right now, and then the X-T5. And I get questions from time to time as to how do I use the X-T series in conjunction with the GFX 100S. And uh, the short answer is the GFX is my main camera for stills work and the X-T series, that whether it's the X-T4 or maybe the X-T5, I don't own this yet, I'm just testing it out. But um, I use this as um, the video camera for everything on this channel, but I also use it as a kind of a, a secondary smaller camera setup. But my always, I don't want to say it's a gripe, but the, the downside of the X-T series, uh, in my opinion, is that it was a, a 26 megapixel system. So the, the X-T3 and the X-T4 were both, I think, 26.1 megapixels, which is, which is plenty of resolution. But... I, I ideally for, for landscape photography, I would like something a little bit more, but uh, when the X-T5 came out, this has 40 megapixels and that's, that's a pretty substantial jump. And I, I don't quote me on this, but I think this is the highest resolution APS-C sensor camera available on the market today, which is pretty exciting. So the X-T5 is the first component of, of the new things that I am trying out today, which uh, as I mentioned a minute ago, pretty excited about, but in conjunction with the release of the X-T5 was this uh, macro lens that is a 30 millimeter f 2.8 i believe i should probably know that already yeah 2.8 and it's absolutely tiny i mean this is probably one of the smallest lenses i've ever used and i've never used a dedicated macro lens before uh, anyone who watched my colorado fall video from uh, a couple weeks ago i did a little bit of quote unquote macro work but it was really just getting as close as my lens could focus on a subject and then really really cropping in which you can kind of create the illusion that it is a a, a true macro lens but it's it's not exactly that, but this right here, I have used it in my living room, just focusing on random plants and things like that. And it is pretty insane how close you can get to something and still achieve and still have it, uh, uh, the, or still have the ability to get something in focus. So having a real macro lens, using the Fuji X-T5, two things I've never used, and of course macro photography I've never done in my life. And I'm pretty excited to, to play around with it today. And um, you know what, I'm just gonna quit babbling and just uh, start start shooting something. So I found this area right through here where there's light is coming through. Let me try and capture a few of these before the light fades. And there's just a tiny, tiny bit of, of dew. Uh, not really water droplets, but just a little bit of sheen on all of this. But the, with this lens, this thing's like, it's like a, a microscope almost. It's crazy how, uh, how close you can get to things. The detail that comes out is just something that I've never quite experienced before. One thing I have learned already is that 
shooting something parallel or shooting with a camera parallel to uh, something is uh, definitely helpful as opposed to photographing like this because it's it's the, the the depth of field is very very shallow with this so getting over something perfectly parallel like this has been able to uh, create some pretty pretty unique photographs so far one thing that I have quickly realized is not the easiest thing in the world to do is to get your tripod low enough to where you're not casting any kind of shadow on your on your subject or you're not uh, uh, moving your subject around or anything like that that is not the the easiest thing in the world to do and it's something that is totally outside of uh, of my wheelhouse but i kind of like the the two little shadows i'm not sure if you can see this two shadows that are being casted by this little twig right here across this composition i tried to do quite a few images handheld and i really really struggled i got the, the ibis on here and i've got a shutter speed of uh a uh, 250th of a second, I'm at shooting with a 30 millimeter macro lens, so that should have been plenty fast enough to, to capture a, uh, a crisp, sharp image, but I wasn't able to do it. But of course, putting this on a, uh, on a tripod with the self timer has definitely, definitely helped. But this is, oh, there's a bunch of deer. This has been absolutely incredible so far. Like I said, something that uh, I've never done before. I've never uh, had the ability or had the opportunity to, to play around with a macro lens and it feels just like I am photographing with a telescope, which is a lot of fun. Now, one thing that, uh, let me take this off the tripod here. One thing that I have really, or I knew that I would really enjoy with the X-T5 is the fact that uh, it's actually smaller. This is the first time in quite a while that the, the X-T series has not gotten bigger with each incremental upgrade from the X-T1 all the way up to the X-T4 seems like they get slightly larger and larger and larger now granted I don't have an L bracket on this right now which uh, if I end up purchasing this camera I definitely will get but it is substantially uh, smaller than the X-T4 and it could be because my X-T4 does have an L bracket on it and this doesn't but um, even if you just compare the, the just body to body it is a smaller form factor which is which is definitely nice and uh, it's it's important for the use that I need the XT series for, you know, not just for video, but for a smaller um, complementary system to go with my GFX. I definitely want this to be uh, as small as it possibly can be because one of my biggest gripes with the GFX system is that it doesn't have a good long lens solution. You know, I have the, the 100 to 200, which uh, it's a medium format camera. So in a full frame terms, that's uh, like 180 millimeters, which is not very long at all. And coming from my, the, the Sony system years ago my favorite lens was the 100 to 400 so you can see how much of a, a difference uh, I'm missing out there but this crop sensor camera and with the the X mount there is a lot of super super long lenses and then the fact that it is a crop sensor camera I mean I can have a uh, telephoto for days and that is very very appealing to me I do wish the GFX system had a a uh, much longer uh, telephoto lens, like a 100 or 400, but it is what it is. I absolutely love that camera, but I also love telephoto photography. And this is kind of a, uh, well, not this lens, but this, uh, the X, uh, X mount or X series uh, cameras is a great uh, complementary uh, system for the GFX. So that's really the, the reason why I use an XT series and a GFX series for GFX is for the stills, XT series is for video and for a smaller setup or the uh, the long lens solution. So that's kind of a, a quick rundown on that question. If you have any questions about that, leave them in the, in the comments below and I'll, and I'll definitely get back in touch with you. But uh, in the meantime, I'm going to look around and see if I can find some more uh, some more macro images. I'm trying to find a subject that's that's not a leaf with uh, with water droplets on it, although it's been absolutely fantastic so far. So just looking around for maybe some in an interesting area of tree bark to, uh, to focus on. But I do want to mention one thing that, just to be completely honest with you, there, there's a lot of uh, what I th would consider meaningful improvements in the new X-T5 over the X-T4. But the majority of those are just kind of nice to have things or not must have things for my workflow. And the main reason why I'm thinking about upgrading is just the bump in resolution. Going from 26 megapixels to 40 megapixels is a substantial increase. And the fact that it's 40 megapixels in an, an APS-C style uh, uh, camera 
is uh, pretty pretty uh, impressive in in my opinion. And the fact that I use this XT series for stills work from time to time, especially when I need a a longer focal length, I do it, uh, need or would I should not say need, but I, I do want that uh, that bump in resolution. So that is the the main reason why I'm thinking about it. I haven't purchased the XT5 yet. I'm just uh, borrowing it. Uh, on loan right now just to, uh, to test it out, but uh, more than likely I will pick it up here in about uh, a month or so whenever I get done uh, running it through, uh, you know, its paces, if you will. As I was searching for things that were not leaves, I came across this absolutely gorgeous leaf here. And as you can see, I'm positioned extremely close to it, but I'm, there's a little bit of wind out here and I'm having a hard time getting this uh, still enough to, to capture this. And uh, as you can see, I'm Oh, I still have the beeps on this camera. Um, I'm so, so close to it and I'm trying not to cast a shadow on it at the same time not trying to bump this leaf because this leaf is connected to that leaf and it is a bit of a challenge. But, uh, and if anybody is a, a macro photography wizard or an expert who's watching this video, if I'm doing anything wrong, actually I know I'm doing stuff wrong, but whatever I am doing wrong, please leave me a comment below and let me know so I can uh, improve this, uh, this technique as, uh, as quickly as possible. But let's see here if this one, and any of these that are coming out okay, of course, I'll flash them on the screen so, uh, so you can take a look. I have quickly come to the realization that subjects that are on the ground are much easier to photograph from a macro style than uh, leaves that are hanging on a tree just because any movement at all it makes it uh, extremely, extremely difficult. So I think I'm going to uh, change my, my strategy up a little bit and continue to focus on things that are very, very stable. Now this one might be my favorite of the day. There's this leaf that was just propping up, but it's being illuminated from the from the backside and it just looks like it's absolutely glowing here. I uh, really need to turn these beeps off, but this looks absolutely fantastic. Here, let me take you off here and I'll show you exactly what it looks like. So there is the composition right there. And as you can see, let me just rotate over so you can see exactly how close the camera is or the, the lenses, I mean, that is absolutely crazy <laughs> how, how close that is. And that is what it looks like. Oops, I'm not sure how well you can see that, but it looks super, super cool. And as you can tell, I'm completely nerding out as always over this stuff because it just, things, oh, there's a cobweb right there. Or spider web, depending on what part of the world you're in. But uh, everywhere you look, there's, these are just things that I never, ever, ever pay attention to. One, because I'm not looking for them, and two, because I didn't have the equipment to accurately uh, um, capture them. But now that I do, and now that I'm looking for it, I see these opportunities all over the place, and it's just been an absolute blast so far. I'm gonna, I'm gonna capture this other, uh, the spider web real quick as well. I found this pine cone here, which is uh, absolutely incredible. You. Uh, Sorry for the beeps again, but you don't realize how much detail are in some of these things until you have a microscope attached to your camera and you get to photograph them, but. And I was thinking here earlier, I was like, I don't think I've ever spent more time in this position while I was out photographing anything in my entire life. I've been on the ground here, just kind of just like crawling around just uh, searching for the, the smallest little details. And this all kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier about you know, just getting outside of your, of your comfort zone and testing out new things. And I, and I know I've made plenty of mistakes here today, mistakes I don't even know that I've made yet, but when I'm, sh I'm sure when I go to review some of these images, I'll start to realize, oh, I should have done this or I should have done that. And it's just all part of that learning experience. But after spending the last, I don't know, maybe hour out here, with a true macro lens, I already feel more comfortable doing this type of, uh, or this style of photography. And that's one more thing that uh, I can add to my, you know, photographic tool chest, if you will, that just helps me to kind of grow as a photographer. And I think that's just a super, super critical and super important to do as well. And it's a lot of fun too. I mean, sticking with the same thing all the time. Yeah, maybe you'll perfect that one thing, 
but it gets a little bit stale after a while. So I could probably sit out here and just let this video run on for hours, but I want to respect everyone's time. And before I do wrap up this week's video, I just wanna say a big thanks to the sponsor of this week's video, which is Squarespace, who I use for all of my website and e-commerce needs. Squarespace provides a dynamic and attractive online platform to create your website. You can display your photography using Squarespace's professional portfolio designs and customize the layout and look and feel of your gallery just so you can make it your own. With Squarespace's traffic overview feature, you can track trends in page visits and views to better optimize your content. And you can even grow and engage with your customers with Squarespace's email campaign tools, which will enable you to create engaging emails that match your website with your products or blog post and logo, just so your messaging remains consistent. So if you're looking to start a new website or possibly upgrade your current website, check out squarespace.com forward slash Mark Denny for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. So I do hope you enjoyed this week's video, something completely different where I get to test out a, a brand new camera and a macro lens and do a type of photography that I've never done before. I do hope you enjoyed this week's video. And like I mentioned earlier, if I did anything completely outside of the, I guess, best practices related to macro photography, please leave me a comment below as uh, that will definitely help us speed up my rate of improvement and if you had any have any questions about the xt uh, the new xt5 or the new 30 millimeter um, uh, macro lens that fuji just released please leave those comments below as well and i will make sure i get back in touch with you as soon as possible and if you enjoyed this week's video if you could give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already and as always i really do appreciate you checking out this week's video and i will see you all next wednesday bye